Hello everyone, this is Rebecca from Papa Trita Schwa and welcome to Wild Card Wednesday. So, uh, you'll have noticed the last couple of projects I've done have been sort of romantically themed. Uh, I'm not doing anything quote-unquote Valentine's, but, uh, but I thought I would uh, just give a nod to uh, the, the love theme. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, sounds a little corny. So, um, what I have done is I have taken, this is, uh, um, you probably uh, know by now that I deconstruct clothing to use the lace and fabric and things like that in my journals and to sell. So, this cuff and the one in the project and then this little veil of sorts was on um, a polyester blouse very uh, 80s maybe uh, or earlier very old-fashioned but uh, not quite so old-fashioned anyway the material was uh, not not good but the lace was like I love the lace so um, I cut that off harvested that and so the cuffs is what I'm making the projects uh, from, or what I made this project from, and what we'll make the other one from. So, um, what I started with was this piece of paper, and this um, is just a piece of 60-pound uh, cardstock. It might actually be a little bit thinner than that, but I think that's what it is. And um, what I used, uh, it started out white, of course, and what I used, I'm going to try to open this cabinet above the camera without bumping it. Um, this, make sure it says, it says, Dark Red Rose Mama and Daddy, so I got this. Uh, this is some of the homemade uh, uh, ink that I made a few months ago from some really dark, dark uh, red uh, dried rose petals. And this is double dipped. Uh, so I put it in once, dried it, then put it in again. Uh, and then I used, um, I soaked up the extras around the edges. So this is the cut. This is the color that it makes um, with this uh, this color. I'll be getting some more of those rose petals uh, when that rose blooms again. So that's what I'm going to be making another one. Almost identical, but not quite identical to this one. So, uh, what what I have on it is uh, a pen uh, with a cameo on it that uh, I used the co corner punch to uh, create the little holes, and I did the same thing on this little off cut. So the pen is actually through those holes at the top, and then through uh, some of the lace of the cuff, so it don't come off. And then to this section of the paper and the little bit of section of the cuff, um, I glued these two rose petals and these are rose blooms rather, and these are uh, scented, so they they smell like roses, like they're supposed to. Um, this is just a piece of music paper that I folded up and. Uh, if I folded it in such a way that you could see the the go to Paris on the front. This is a piece of vellum that I had. It was already sort of this color pink and I just run uh, my brown ink over it just slightly. And then this is a piece of wrapping paper. You'll have seen it in another project uh, a couple of three months ago. And I just um, folded it uh, I tore out the section that I wanted it, folded it, inked the edges, inked the edges, then folded it. And then the cuff is open. Now this cuff had a, a defect, which is exactly why the I got this um, at a thrift store. 
when I was working at the thrift store and I don't I don't know if you can see right here but the buttonhole has been cut into so this button don't have the full hole to go through like the others this is actually supposed to be in there like that so somehow there had been some damage to the cuff and I'm sure that's why it was donated but I got it for I think I gave a dollar for it maybe and I've had it uh, a while so what I did it's or what I was getting ready to say is this cuff is still open at the bottom and then if you turn it over this is what it looks like on the back side so it's just a, a plain cuff I didn't do anything special to the bottom but very carefully you can pull this out I just did a little stamping here with a little cling stamp that I have um, in uh, just some hand like handwriting and it's just a, a card and it just slips right in there but everything that is on this cuff like this is attached so um, you could add more to it if you wanted but I, I made this um, just this way and uh, it's three this card is three and a quarter inches wide and I just have to very very carefully put it in but it will go right back and I just have it sliding out the bottom just a tiny bit so this let's see if I can put it all back together the way I had it um, this is um, what we're going to make today is uh, I think a lace cuff pocket is what this will end up being so let me uh, get my materials together let me put this up a little closer maybe so you can see it a little better but um let me get my materials together and we'll get started okay so if you want to make a project like this you don't have to have a, a lace cuff or anything like that you could take um if you had some wide lace with a scallop you could create your own little cuff um, you wouldn't have to have the real buttonholes, but you could sew on the buttons and pretend, you know, that it's a, make a pretend cuff. Um, but it could also be done with something like um, a, a handkerchief. You could create the same effect with a, with a handkerchief. Um, I just thought this would just lend itself to that uh, Victorian romantic uh, era a little bit. So, uh, so that's kind of what I'm trying to build. But any any uh, fabric that uh, has that romantic feel, a piece of velvet, uh, that sort of thing, uh, would work good. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is figure out which way I want to cut this piece of paper. Um, I think I'm going to cut it this way. And this cuff is uh, it's just the way that it's been sewn together, but it's just a little bit narrower at the top than the other one or so it seems let me just double check that measurement no it's the same so it'll be fine all right so uh, what I need to cut is three and a quarter inches and I realized that uh, I should have lifted my camera up just a little bit more and I don't have a, a anything mechanized to do that so uh, it'll just have to be the way it is for the minute um, but anyway here we go and the other thing I didn't do is measure how long I made this card but I made it six inches so that's what I'm gonna do with this one and I'm gonna cut it so that this um, extra a layer of stain of, of uh, rose ink <laughs> um, is on the piece at the bottom so six inches if I can get it to cooperate and then I can cut this in two how long that's the three and the quarter I think I did want it two or one and a half that's 
just turn it this way and hold that. Or do I? No, I think I want this this way. I did one of them, I, I cut this in two on the other one and did one a little narrower than the other. And I think that's just what I did. If I didn't, it don't matter. It's close enough. So that's it for the cutting. So now uh, I'm hoping that this gives me the result that I want. The one thing I will do is on this one I used this and I think on this one I might use this just to have a little bit of change. So let me put that in there and find I've got a more of a firm spot right over here so hopefully I'm not out of shot but uh, Yes, I like that. And in we go. Yep. And well, that that one turned out just a little bit cockeyed. Okay. So I've got some. Uh, Ranger Coffee ink and I've got a little, I've got some uh, acrylic stamps and blocks that I've never opened and I did open them. Um, this is something I picked up at Joann's. Uh, must have been when I was visiting my daughter in Indiana because we don't have a Joann's where I live. So, um, and I ordered these from Amazon probably, I know, more than a year ago. Um, I have all of my little clear stamps kind of put up. They're still in the original packaging in this little metal thing. And I have them put up and I kind of forget about them. But I really need to start using them more. Because I'm finding that I really like them. <laughs> so um, I'm going to use this uh, stamp. It is in French, whatever, I don't know what it says, but whatever it says, it's in French. And let's find which one of these are the best. This side's the best. Okay. So I'm going to ink that up. And when I did the first one, I know because it's never had any ink on it before, it needs to get inked really well. And um, so I just kept pressing it in until everything looked brown. <laughs> and so I just wanted to make sure that that everything had, had ink and that uh, middle looks a little dry. And I'm going to put this right near the top. Yep. I have a hole. I don't know why I had that. Do you think that I could do it again? Yeah, I see an air bubble in there, I think. That might be my problem. I'm going to try it. Or at least I think I am. I might. I might not. Maybe I just go below it with another one. And then whatever I put in here will kind of cover it a little bit, maybe. I'll do this or try to do it better. Yeah, that looks a little better. Okay, so I'm gonna stop with that. Now, some people might think I'm strange, but um, since I'm using this and it's coffee, I'm just gonna use it. And the way I do with just a tiny little thin line, I just use the pad. 
and uh, go around it that way. It makes a funny noise, but that's okay. We can tolerate it for a minute. <laughs> and then I can put this to the side. Let it dry for just a minute while I get some of the other things ready to go in it. So I'm going to put that over to the side. Now, what I'm going to use... Well, actually, I need to do one of these. I think this one will work better. But it takes up so much room. So I think it's going to be this one. So... I'm concentrating. <laughs> um, I went quiet. Okay. So let's. I'm just going to run this just a tiny bit. I had me a piece of paper over here. A tiny bit like that. That looks good. And then I'm going to do the edge. And this, even though it'll have that pin attached to it, it is technically a little journaling card. So, um, so I haven't decided though what I'm going to use the shawl part of it for. Um, but I would like to do something along these same lines to uh, to make like a, a matching set almost. All right, now let's see if I can do this without any major complications, like poking myself with a pen or something like that. All right, so in and across and then back in very careful lock hopefully I left myself enough room to do what I'm trying to do there we go okay now, let's get it all Straighten back out. Yeah, I've had this little pin here for a long time and knew that I wanted to do some kind of of um, shabby, chic-ish type project with it. And uh, I think it works really well. Okay, so this is dry, I'm sure. So we're going to slide this in here and hope that it goes in smoothly because those little edges want to catch in the lace and you don't want it to catch in the lace okay move that out of the way Okay, so far so good. Now the next thing is have two more of these um, dried rose petals. I don't have my plant scissors back here, so I'm gonna evidently it's gonna work all out. <laughs> okay I believe okay so I'm going to put just a little bit of glue 
Come on. You need day now. There we go. Just a little bit of glue there. And I'm going to fold this up one handed. Hey, I had two little girls 18 months apart and carried them both at the same time. <clears throat> Way back when they were little. I forget exactly how old they were, but they were uh, like four and two or three and one. Well, probably like three and a half and one and a half, something like that. Anyway, um, I lived in a little town in North Carolina called Dillsboro. And I lived way on top of the mountain that the train went through the tunnel under the mountain. And this would have been 90, been 93. So Jamie would have been two and Rachel would have been three and a half. So now we know. <laughs> and uh, it snowed. And it snowed. And it snowed some more. And we were without power. I was a single mom. I had divorced their dad. And uh, so um, it was right after Christmas. And I had gotten Jamie a an aquarium uh, for Christmas. There was 16 inches of snow on the ground. And I lived on a non-state maintained road. <laughs> and I had a little bitty car. I did have front wheel drive. But I had to park it at the bottom of the mountain. And it was like a half a mile walk straight up. And when I say straight up, I do mean straight up. So we had been out to town. I bought a gallon of milk. I had two bags of fish. And I had two gir two girls. One weighed 50, roughly 50 pounds. The other one weighed 40 pounds. And I put Rachel on my back. Put Jamie on my front. Told them both to hold on with everything they had. Carried a gallon of milk in one hand. Fish in the other hand. And I walked them all the way to the house. Up the middle of this road where the the routes where other people had driven were a solid sheet of ice but the middle was still you know I could tromp in the snow so yeah uh, did stuff like that all the time <laughs> alrighty so I'm going to push this back while that glue dries I don't want it to seep through to the back side onto the card so I'm just going to leave that over there I'm going to uh, Put some little corners on this one and I totally messed that one up so let's just I dropped the scissors <laughs> oh my goodness let's try that one more time But though that was a long time ago, I mean, Rachel is, well, I'm not going to say how old she's going to be, but let's just say that I remember being her age and uh, thinking I can't believe I'm this part far past 30 and 40's not that far away. <laughs> anyway. But yeah. We had all kinds of adventures when we, when they were little. Alright. Now, I just wonder if that's got just enough of damp ink on it to leave an impression. Nope, not really. I really don't want a huge impression, but that works. Okay. Oh, I don't know how I'm putting this up. Let's go around that edge. I love brown and pink together. And this has turned out to be such a pretty color. Um, I just, I can't believe how pretty it's turned out. And I've got um, 
a journal that I've kind of put off start starting it. I've got the cover made and still have just some slight assembly to do there. But um, I was waiting to uh, for the inspiration of, of the pages I was going to put on the inside. And this is the perfect color. So that's a project I will be starting probably next week after I get back from visiting my parents. Okay, so I forgot to get my piece of lace, uh, not lace, but my um, seam binding. And I need a piece of music paper, so I'm going to pause the camera and go get uh, the couple of things that I forgot to bring over here where I'm working. But I will be right back. Okay. I have uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, this... Uh, um, oh, I can't even think of now what it's called. The seam binding. Right here it says seam binding, but you can see I bought that at Goodwill probably a long time ago because it's got a 19 date on it. But anyway, um, I s sprayed it with just a little bit of tea stain and just a little bit of coffee uh, stain and scrunched it up and dried it. It's still tight, slightly damp, but not much. Uh, to go on this here in a minute. So, um, I tore me off a piece of this uh, wrapping paper that I used on the other one. And I'm just going to try to get the edges a little bit, but I don't know how successful I'm going to be. Okay, there we go. It's very thin, and I know the trick of holding another piece of paper behind it, but since it's got torn edges that are all uh, over the place, uh, I'm just going to try to make it work a little bit. Now, I don't know if the glue I put on for the roses will be completely dry by the time that I finish, um, but hopefully it will be. And so I'm just going to fold this one a little different than the other one. Because I do want it to stick up a little bit. And actually I need to pay more attention to what I'm doing. I think. Go more that way. So I wanted some of those little buds. I'll just hit that with a little bit of ink. Nothing major. Let me ease this over here, and I'm going to put that right in the middle, like that. And then on the other one, I did have this little leftover piece that I forgot to put in, but I did put it in a few minutes ago. Um, then I have this piece of uh, music paper that's actually the next line. Uh, the next piece after the other one. So the other one uh, talks about Paris, but this one's Paris, which we know is how it's uh, said in uh, French. But I don't want the I don't want the back. So I'm going to see if I can see how I can fold it. I really don't want the poor inhabitants, so I'm going to. Air this right down through here and toss that part. And then I'm going to put a little ink around the edges here. Now, because the pocket is basically already made using this cuff, mostly it's just about putting a little bit of decoration in it to the extent that you want to put decoration in it. So. that and then I'm going to bring that in this way and bring that down because that's way too far okay let's see if we can put that Maybe like this. 
give it a, a little bit of a nudge. Now, what was the other thing I had in there? That, oh, no, I had the... I didn't put it back in. Um, I don't think I have another piece of that. So I'm just going to put that right there like that. That will have to do. But I am going to... Now the way I did the other one is I brought the seam binding up through the buttonholes and tied it on the side. So, but it only had two buttonholes. I suppose I could still do the same thing. Um, just be brave and unbutton it down to here. one side of it and the other side I love how this after you put just a very light um, a few spritzes of the co uh, tea and then the coffee on this ribbon it turns out to be almost identical to that color <laughs> okay so let's get that little button back in through that buttonhole, if possible. Okay, there's that one. And that one. Okay. I might have cut this just a touch too long. It seems to be a little longer than the other piece, but if it will... Uh oh, my rose is coming apart. <laughs> but if it will work... Pull that back through just a little. There. I don't want it too tight. All right, how are we over here with the... It's still very, very wet. Um, the one I did, I did the other one yesterday. yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Anyway, it took it a couple hours to dry because it was just so thick and it's just the nature of it. Now, the other thing I got that I did put on the other one... Uh, that I am going to put on this one as well, even though it's, uh, it's actually not needed, but I thought it looked cute, was the little pin. So, how did I do that? Um, I think I just put the pin around, or in this case, I'm going to put the pin around the button. And just pin it there okay okay that's as oops that's as far as I'm gonna go uh, with that it uh, it uh, is as good as it's gonna be unfortunately I'm gonna have to leave this on here but um, but I can um, rearrange it so that it looks better but I'm going to uh, pause the camera and clean up my workstation and then we'll take a look at both of them well guess what I found another piece of that same paper so I just uh, snipped the corners and put just a touch of ink on it and and put it in um, I tore that piece of paper down to keep that lifted up until the glue uh, completely dries but that's what we've got. Now this will lay down better once this comes out. But right now it's just holding that up there. But but what we've got is a little cuff pocket. Uh, you can see where I cut out the pieces are falling out. Um, but a little um, lace pocket uh, made from a cuff off of a blouse. So hopefully you enjoyed that. And remember that you can make it with... 
uh, you can make it with paper. You can make paper uh, have a fabric look, but you can make it with a handkerchief, uh, a bigger piece of lace that you cut down, uh, especially lace that already has a scalloped edge if you would like that look, or any other uh, uh, nice fabric like a velour or um, uh, a tapestry type thing. Any, anything that uh, you want to use to replicate the look. Alright, thank you very much for uh, tuning in and I will see you again very soon.